Okay, chapter six. Things are starting to heat up here. Still in year 16, mm -hmm. part two. Friends? Question mark? Yeah. Okay, but wait. What are we doing? What's happening? What are we talking about? Inner Demons, Blazing a Path to Happiness. It's Rock's book. You can get the first chapter for free at rocksworld.com. You can order it from Barnes & Noble or Amazon. There's a free chapter on Amazon, too, I, I noticed. Okay. You can get it there as well. Mm -hmm. And rate and review this podcast. We're giving away a book when we get to 50 reviews. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Um, talking to this girl, this girl, Dana, Dana Gray. We started talking, like, all the time. Um, and she became my best friend, which was crazy because can guys and girls be friends? I was testing it out. Uh-huh. We're going to see how that pans out. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this was, so this was interesting. Um, I get this girl's number. She basically forces her number on me. Um, oh, Lord. Listen, I wasn't asking for it. She gave me her phone number. So I took her phone number because my motto, it's rude and slightly disrespectful to say no to a beautiful woman who wants to spend time with you. Yeah, this is the second time you've brought that up. So I will. It's a recurring thing. I will uh -huh. be bringing that up the next time <laughs> I say I want to snuggle. Listen. Because I get a whole lot of no. Listen. Based no, on your okay. passion that we learned about last time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. This is foreshadowing, babe. Yeah, well, I'm looking back <laughs> <laughs> at the facts in foreshadowing. my life. So, yeah. With you. I'm, I'm talking to this girl like every day. Um, and like an interesting thing happens. We become friends. <laughs> And it's just a funny way to put it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this really interesting thing happened where, like, a woman, a girl, a female. Yeah. Because, okay. It's a friend. <laughs> I'm 16 years old, right? This is high school. This is when, you know, the hormones have been, you know, is this thing on? Okay. We're, we're ready. We're, we're going here. <laughs> you know, it's that time when, um, I knew a couple of people had been having sex. I thought everyone was more or less having sex. Um, but with this with this person, Dana, I wasn't th I was never thinking about sex. I wasn't thinking about how she looked. I mean, she was beautiful. Yeah, um, I mean, you've mentioned her looks several times now, so that's a lie. No, I'm saying I Okay, no, 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 no. Two different things. Two different things. I notice how people look. I know who it. I know what. I notice how people look, but I wasn't tripping off of that I about her. I not be a smart man, <laughs> but I know what love is. Yes, Jenny. <laughs> I'm sorry, calling you Jenny. Um, I I I wasn't concerned with how she looked. I wasn't necessarily. I mean, she was attractive, and it was just the furthest thing from my mind because all I could think of was. All the stuff that we could talk about. I also think you were really um, like having the experience of being seen. Yes, because when I say all the stuff that we could talk about, I mean, this was, you know, basically the, 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 the first four or five chapters in this book, plus the stuff that I didn't put in, I got to tell her all of that. And there was no judgment. There was no pity. It was just um, we could talk about it. And then she would tell me about her family and, um, you know, the different things that were that were going on with her and her hopes and her dreams and her aspirations. And it was just a very um, it was just a very supportive environment. And I think that um, neither one of us had experienced anything like that before um and we were very not necessarily that's not secretive we were very guarded 
um, guarded about it because we did understand how rare it was to be friends with someone of the opposite sex or even just friends in general, because, you know, you have friendships when you're in high school, you know, 16, you know, years old, but you no, know, how, how solid are these friendships, right? People are falling in and out of friendships all the time. Um, I mean, I guess, especially these days with social media and who was saying what behind who's back. Um, and so I think we understood how rare it was just to find a person who uh, would listen, could understand our perspective and didn't judge, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's really what a safe space is, right? It's this space where you feel comfortable saying the things you can't say um, to other people or or that you don't want to say to other people because you keep them close to your chest for, for whatever reasons. Yeah. And it's very special when you start to find these little pockets where you're like, oh, snap, I can be fully me here and never have to apologize for it. Yeah, I, I think, you know, when, when we talk about this this time in a person's life, um, there's so many things going on. Uh, a person has so many questions and parents aren't necessarily, depending on people's relationships with their parents, obviously, they aren't necessarily the best person to talk to um, about every subject, particularly when the subject is them. Um, and this is where that, you know, having a village uh, uh, comes into comes into play. But you still have the problem with you're never really going to be that open with adults. Nor you, should you be. Right. They're not your friends. You know, they, they, they're your friends, but they also like have running a, your mouth to the cop. Well, <laughs> giving away yeah. information that will be used against you but is see, what I learned. <laughs> as an adult, as an adult, uh, having friendships with, you know, younger people, um, there is a friendship, but then there's always that, you know, larger responsibility and accountability, um, and so, yes, there is a sort of guardianship that that comes along with relationships with with a lot of age difference. Um, I think the network of, of, of children um, or peers that one has is, as, as all the studies say, extremely influential on um, the development of our characters and and everything that you know related to that but there is a um there's only so far that tends to go with same sex uh uh you know platonic friendships right like teenage boys are only going to talk about a a certain range of things anything outside of that range um we lacked we tend to lack the vocabulary because it was never something these weren't tools provided to us earlier in our development as people um whereas women girls are acculturated more that way to talk about a wider spectrum of of feelings and thoughts related to those feelings um and so you you may have more of the vocabulary, but I think something different happens um, is that you guys are very aware of the dangers of too much information getting out. Uh, what do you mean? Well, I think because you're so... Um, you guys have the vocabulary to talk about your thoughts and your feelings and, and be very expressive that way. Um, your expressiveness is the, is sort of the, 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 the entryway uh, for attacks. Um, the cattiness of that they say, you know, girls have, um, you have the vocabulary to be closer connected, but that cl that closeness also opens you up to a certain cattiness and very, very um, deep betrayals, if you will. Whereas guys, um, our relationships, I don't know, and I'm just spitballing here, they may be 
do tend to last longer and there's less of that internal conflict between guys because we aren't really talking about a wide range of, you know, of issues. There isn't really these secrets that are, you know, embarrassing secrets that, you know, um, someone is going to drop in the middle of all the other guys and ruin your reputation. You know, mm-hmm. it's well, you bring up a good point about how women really are <laughs> like the leaders, especially at this age. Mm-hmm. We grow up hearing. What do we hear? Women mature faster than than boys. Yeah. Boys. So women have to learn to be patient. Mm-hmm. But the narrative is never Hey, guys, you should look to them because they are maturing faster than you. So look to them for leadership. And so I don't think I don't think girls are maturing faster than boys. I think boys and girls are maturing along their independent paths. And when what I was saying in terms of the dynamics of intersex relationships versus the possibilities of intersex relationships, you know, between girls and boys, um, there's a richness there uh, that isn't explored in terms of plutonic, you know, platonic relationships. People have sisters and cousins and whatever, but, you know, a a friendship um, because just the natural dynamic between, you know, you know, males and females, there is a natural curiosity of the perspective right you're, you we just see the world and we experience the world differently and i think there's a richness that can develop in these relationships um that is if done properly is extremely beneficial and valuable for the self esteem of you know the you know the people because i sure, mean but it's yeah. not it's it is a fact that girls mature faster than boys babe this no, is not so, an opinion of no mine. so and 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 so i want to i want to draw this distinction that i think i think the way we talk about these things in a in terms of this comparison faster than bigger than more or less than i think that's the wrong way to 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 talk about these things okay well that's how you compare things no no no, right this is how people are comparing things and i'm saying it's the comparison itself that is that is misaligned to what it is that we're trying to do i understand why people do it i understand the lexicon and the things that they're trying to communicate however i think we should focus less on who is hitting what given this notion of time and focus on the in the moment needs of of development of character okay, development well, what uh, okay fine i'm what, the examples you gave of the access that girls are taught to have to their feelings yes. to their vocabulary yes this is the one i'm talking about I, no th- and that's what i'm saying i understand exactly what it is that you're talking about i'm saying we can talk about this thing but how about we shift the way we talk about it and the vocabulary because i think the way we talk about it historically i think i think it's misaligned to what it is that we would like to do shifting the paradigm and if we if we so for instance a lot of things that are going on with 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 young boys right now is that um, they seem to not be faring as well in this society. Um, you know, there seems there's a lot of, and this is I'm a father of a daughter, so you know, I don't care how you take it because I'm telling you what this actually is. Um, there is a more overt marketing campaign to let's say get young girls into STEM. And computers and all of these different things. That's you know, girl power and the 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 future is it's female. And I'm all on board for this as a father of of a daughter. I want the widest possible you know area for her to play in. But in that space, a lot of a lot of young boys are feeling left behind. They don't. The path isn't clear to them of how to grow up because we aren't focusing on them. Um, and it's not to say that that's necessarily anyone's fault because there has been this emergent problem, you know, with with girls that we've we've wanted to fix. But we have 
not kept up to speed with helping young boys navigate this changing environment as well. Um, that's all. That's all it is that I'm saying. It's so I think we should focus less on comparing where boys and girls are, and focus on well where they are relative to each other, and just focus on where they are within themselves and where it is that they need to be. That's the only thing that what I'm saying is like we shouldn't necessarily say, "Hey, this maturing faster," or 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 the other because. It's not the culture that we that we would like to build. Oh, I think it is. I think I would love to teach young men to look to women to learn from them. Uh, you're you're making that's all I'm saying. It's not even a comparison of who's who's doing right. it faster. What I'm saying is these young boys who feel left out can be brought into the fold of this conversation. Right, and, and this is what I'm saying. the The beauty and the value of having relationships with the opposite sex just pure friendships fine let's get into that let's test this theory see how it worked out for you hold on hold on so let's let's no let's go into it let's go into it we've had enough of this so where do you okay well where do you want to pick it up i want to pick it up where we left off which is you on the phone with dana and you're talking about you know you've had these late night conversations your friends your friends your friends then the conversation of getting drunk comes up yeah, because I didn't, I didn't drink or smoke or do any of these things. Um, I was, I didn't want to, I didn't want to bog myself down with with anything to keep me stuck in Oakland. Getting, you know, becoming a, you know, I, I knew all the just say no stuff from the eighties was kind of bullshit. But at the same time, good message. Um, so. But high school, I was still on that kick. It's like, you know what? I'm not going to risk it or take the additional risk of ruining my future. And so we're talking about this. And so she tells me, the well, the first night we met, we really met, she was drunk. And I'm like, well, when was that? Because the the first time I'm connecting when I that I recall like meeting her was like that Monday, and she gave me her phone number. We were talking in class, and she's like. At homecoming. And I'm like, at homecoming? When did I like talk to you at homecoming? She was like, we danced all night long. And I'm like, wait, that was you? (laughs) And so she's like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah. And so she had this great laugh at my expense that I didn't connect the fact that she was the girl at homecoming. I didn't connect it. When I met her at homecoming, I didn't connect it on the following Monday. I didn't connect it for the next, you know, month and a half or two months that we talked every night on the phone. It didn't all dawn on me until that moment right there. Mm -hmm. See, this is what girls have to put up with if we are going to be friends with boys. So just know (laughs) we have to have a wide range (laughs) of patience for the bullshit. And so (laughs) there was... Whatever veil that was in my head about this this magic girl um, <laughs> from homecoming, mid October, I want to see, it was sometime in mid October, this magic girl from homecoming that for whatever reason I had just completely forgotten about. Um, and, this, and this girl who was my best friend, um, the veil that separated these two people evaporated. And then I realized that I had a problem because I realized that my best friend was kind of my dream girl. How corny and cliche is that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, But I didn't say anything about it because... I didn't know. So, so mind you, I felt that I was in the friend zone. So I'm not going to violate the friend zone. Violating the friend zone, there's nothing but embarrassment and just self-loathing on the other side of that. So, you know, if you're friends, you stay friends. Um, so we were talking about people that we liked. There was a boy who she liked or liked her, you know, and there was a girl that I liked. Um, but neither one of us had 
much experience with Wait, hold on. What? Well, let's let's talk about the um Super Bowl invite. The Super Bowl. Cuz that invite. happens first. That happens first. Come on. I completely forgot about this. I should probably read my book. This <laughs> shows how everything you just said again is a bunch of bullshit because huh? you walk uphill for miles in the heat to go see this chick that quote is just a friend yes no wrong (laughs) we met you already rock you don't do that kind of thing outside of for what you're gonna get from it there was nothing to get i was 16 and like kind of a virgin okay there was whatever no 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 no. so okay you're gonna you no 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 so my best friend my best friend is like hey we have this big super bowl party do you want to come and hang out and so i'm like yeah sure i don't you know there's the cowboys playing i didn't care about them but yeah sure i'll go hang out with my best friend watch the super bowl party and people are like, hot? How was it hot during during Super Bowl? That's like early February. It's California. You know, we have nice weather all the time, even in the winter. So I'm walking. I have this jacket on. And yes, she lives up, you know, these hills. And it's a Sunday. So the buses aren't, you know, they run very limited. And so I have to like walk, you know, maybe a mile or two up and down like these, you know, these hills to get to her house. So I get there. Um, Have you ever done that for any other friend? Yeah, I've. Dude, first of all, I was always walking. <laughs> I, I had just gotten my license, you know, five, you know, four months ago, and so you know, walking and catching the bus is. See, you grew up in the suburbs, so maybe that's why it's so, it's so shocking to you. I've been catching the bus since I was five years old and my father never had a car. So taking public transportation and walking a mile or two was like nothing. All right, whatever. Fine. I will, I will believe your experience that you say you had. So this is your best friend. You walk there, you show up. What do you find when you get to her house? I find a house full of Filipinos being Filipino. (laughs) And <laughs> what does that mean, babe? What does that mean? It, that means that there's a ton of family. Everyone is laughing and joking and just this this boisterous, you know, boisterous family. Um, so background on Dana, her father's black and her mother was half black and half Filipino. Um, but somewhere in there, Dana got the very Asian eyes. Um so her eyes, by looking at her eyes, I mean, she, they were extremely Asian, but, you know, the rest of her, um, yeah, she she just had this this look. Um, and so um, I'm in this house and it's everyone is loud and everyone is introducing themselves. And as you already maybe picked up, my memory is terrible. So um, people are introducing me introducing themselves to me i'm forgetting their names on the spot um everyone is super friendly i'm an introvert right so i'm like lightweight slowly sort of starting to have a panic attack but keeping it cool um so i'm you know i'm sitting next to her and we're talking i meet her mother i meet her father i meet her brother i meet you know everyone cousins and whatnot um and now it's time for dinner, right? Because it's, it's a party. So as I get up to go make my plate, she stops me and says, no, I'll go. I'll make your plate. And so I don't like people fussing over me. It draws attention to me. And so I'm, you know, I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll, I can do it. I can, I can manage. And she stops me. Like, you know, she has a hand on my arm and like, like stares at me and she's like no when you're with me i am making your plate Uh, yeah this is where her and i really veer off i won't be doing that sure but (laughs) i was completely missing 
I'm not I'm not bright in certain I yeah, am not a smart it. man. Especially Jenny. when it comes to your relationship with Dana, dense Hold on. Densey dense. You're getting ahead. Anyway. So I, I don't get it. I mean, I'm sure everyone else is picking up all of these things that whatever. So she brings me this plate. So I'm eating. And it's um it's this her mother made the spaghetti and she used crab, you know. It was the spaghetti with like crab meat in it. Um, and I told her that I was allergic to crab. And so she took out the crab legs that was, you know, in the spaghetti. But for whatever reason, maybe because we're stupid and teenagers, we didn't think about the essence of the crab legs being all in the, the, the juice of the spaghetti. So I'm eating this stuff. And... um all of a sudden, I just start feeling bad, and you know, I, I start having this allergic reaction to go on top of the <laughs> slow rolling panic attack that I, I was having. <laughs> and so everyone start like starts looking at me like my worst, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like being the being naked dream, right? This was it. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm physically having something happen to me. So I'm everyone, thinking about that scene in Hitch when this happens. Yeah. To him. <laughs> So I'm having this situation, so embarrassed, and so she's looking, she's looking worried. Everyone is all yeah. upset. We figure out what it is, and you know, I think someone gave me a Benadryl, and um, it, it eventually went away. And you know, I just I ended up just going home. The Cowboys won by a lot. They were playing Buffalo, and they won by a lot. And you know, to hell with the Cowboys. And I think it's pretty interesting that after you had a severe allergic reaction no one offered to drive you home because this is the 90s not far from yeah. the 80s when we didn't care about the well-being of children okay. <laughs> no i mean i was i i was fine they were so concerned but by this time i was feeling better and i was like no i'm fine i i just want to go home and so i go You're home. like i'd like to return to my passion <laughs> yeah but there were all of these things happening that I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't. You were not picking up what she was putting down. I was not picking up what she was putting down. And so eventually she had to kind of like just come out and say it. And it was a roundabout way. I mean, we like these other people and I won't spoil the story. It's a, it's a cute story. You should read it. Um, But we make a plan to, get together and have sex with each other that was our great plan um and not to be with each other um you should you should go and read the reason why we decided to have sex with each other it was offered to me i should say and not to be smirch her because um she is be beyond smirch is that a word i is have it? no idea <laughs> um it, it was just one of those it was one of those teenage moments that um, it was it was it was really it was the best episode of Let's Make a Deal that a 16 year old boy could ask for. Yes. But, you know, that. Yeah, I wasn't ready for it, as you could probably imagine. And we get into that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the next chapter. But I think. I think all of this goes back to what we were talking about earlier of we don't have structures. I don't think we have good structures helping young men and young women navigate um, that that time of that time of life. Um, I mean, we don't we aren't friends. Any interactions that we have, I mean, we do end up developing friends, but um, most of our interactions with each other, there's always this, um, are you hooking up? Should we hook up? And that quickly clouds the, the, you know, the relationship or a lot of potential relationships are just never hatched because you aren't attracted to them you know, in a sexual way. And so you're like, well, what's the point of that? Mm -hmm. You know, what, did you have any 
besides like your your boyfriend at the time, I mean, did you have? Friends? Yeah, most of my friends were guys in ninth and tenth grade, just because the girls weren't weren't trying to have it. What about eleventh grade? Yeah, by then I had one of my best friends, uh, John Heisey. He he and I always like agreed if we weren't married by thirty five, we would get married. Um. I'm 36, but he is married, so. So, yeah. <laughs> and know. I came to realize that I don't want to be married. But he was that friend of, like, he was just always down to hang. Um, I met him that summer of band camp when I, you know, got in trouble. Band camp. He was one of the people that were there and knew what had actually happened. And so when he, you know, watched me get escorted out... The next time he saw me, he goes, yo, what the hell? Like, why were you the one getting in trouble? I'm like, thank you. So he was another person that um, saw me, but mm-hmm. then there was no sexual attention between us. He was really a friend. Um, later in college, we were like, okay, well, you know, I'm in between people. Are you in between people? And so he he was like a great friends with benefits through college and even a little bit after college we we just legitimately had a deal of like hey i i just went through a really bad breakup can we hang out can you be my rebound we we did not expect anything from each other other than a friendship and you know we ended up being more to each other when when needed physically but he was just a solid friend but then he got married and we weren't allowed to be friends anymore yeah, well, you know. But yeah, I think I think it just it really all underscores this thing of the value of platonic, you know, relationships and friendships that we don't, you know, we just don't we don't give ourselves a space to have. And then just at a at a larger a larger issue just with teenage guys um, there's just, there's so much going on now. I mean, you hear about incels and you hear about all, all of these things and, you know, you hear about the country of Japan of where their entire, they have like a generation of people who need to be taught how to flirt. Um, and you see with teenagers, you know, today, um, I mean, you, you, you want to talk about, let's see, I was 10 years before you, um, at that age, um fast forward 10 years um you were you guys were still dealing with i don't know maybe some similar situations um whereas you know boys and girls aren't really friends they can't hang out um but even but today it's even worse i think maybe the the stigma of guys and girls being friends are less um and you know this is before you start talking about you know the non-binary and 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 that whole situation um, but even though there may be less stigma on um, people being friends, you know, outside of, you know, their gender or, or sexuality or, or preference or whatever, um, people aren't really friends, but online these days. There's so much going on online. Um, and that being online all the time further fractures and distance, distances people from the richness of you know, the full, the full measure of interpersonal, personal relationships. I mean, Dana and I, we got to see each other every day in class. And then we spoke on the phone all the time. Yeah. But that's just how you communicated. No. Yeah. And that, our that, grandparents wrote letters like they, the ch- kids now text and they're on Snapchat or whatever, like true. And, and there's way less, I actually think there's more platonic relationships being built right now. They there's showing all kinds of stats about, how much they're not having sex no, as teenagers. No, what, so what, what I mean is, is like the, the, it's, it's definitely much more okay to have these platonic relationships, but the depth and quality of relationships on a whole has gone down because people are so online and so isolated. You hear about, you know, these, the levels of feelings of isolation have gone up, even though we're in, you know, everything is so free. This is all pre-COVID and, and, and whatnot. Um, and so 
even though there is more freedom to be friends with, with anyone that you want to be friends with, and there are more means of which to communicate with them, you, you, there's this higher, this higher prevalence of people feeling more isolated. And this is both, you know, for guys and girls, um, for different reasons, but it's, it's, it's just so very interesting that with all the means of communication and ways and, and the freedom to be friends, something that you and I would have maybe craved, they have the freedom to do that, but the environment is even less hospitable, not specifically because of the, 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 you know, the gender part, but just people are doing it less in certain ways. Um, when I think that's, you know, getting connected and, and, and strengthening th- these connections and different connections, I think that's the theme of all of this, you know, critical race or woke, anti-woke, and every, everyone is just starved for connection. Yeah. Well, I think the answer to... Um, the misunderstandings that we have about, you know, different races, different genders, different whatever, those misunderstandings always become less when you spend time with those people. Mm -hmm. When you get to know them as humans and you start to experience the sameness instead of all the differences that you're told that you have. And I, I think that's something that this generation has in spades with their ability to connect with kids their age in other countries Mm -hmm. and like their world is so much smaller in certain ways where you might not jive with anyone at your high school but you have this kind of the way my dance studio was you have this like other group of friends online that just totally get you but they're in whatever countries you know that is that is very true so yeah you know what and i'm glad you i'm glad you you did bring that up because as I was saying, it's like, oh, we had richer ways of communicating back in the day, sounding like back in the day guys. Like, no, it's just different. I'm sure they feel that their communications are, excuse me, are very rich, just like our grandparents thought writing whole four page letters by hand was very rich and, and, and thoughtful and meaningful communication. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think the fact that they can speak to kids across the world um, comparing notes and, and finding those communities that maybe didn't ex- that don't exist in their small towns or in their particular high school mm-hmm. um, yeah what we are always worried about the kids and the kids always manage to become adults and worry about their own kids yep hmm so yeah um speaking of kids um We'll pause here, and I guess the next chapter is um, all about what Dan and I did that tends to bring about kids, but we did not. Not even close. Okay. 